Hi, my name is Elliot Botwick. I'm an AI and machine learning architect on the field CTO team here at Snowflake. Today, I'd like to walk through a demo showcasing the new container runtime capability on top of native Snowflake notebooks. We're going to train two XGBoost models, one leveraging CPU resources, the other built on GPUs. We'll then compare the runtimes of these models to understand how much of a boost can we get by leveraging GPUs in Snowflake. Let's jump in. So here we have our Snowflake notebook up and running. If I check out my notebook settings, you can see here that we're running on top of containers. We have a specific Snowflake ML GPU runtime, which contains various Python packages for data engineering tasks, model training, model inference, data visualization, and other common tasks in a Python notebook. We also have a compute pool, the GPU NVIDIA Medium, which is a specific instance type that has GPUs and CPU resources available. We'll look more into that here shortly. Let's go ahead and jump through the notebook. So now we have our intro, which shows information about the workflow, key takeaways and notes for running our notebook. We'll go ahead and kick off some cells by starting off with a pip install to bring in one of my favorite plotting libraries, Seaborn, so that we can visualize the data associated with our machine learning model. We'll go ahead and import Seaborn and a couple other packages here, and we'll create our Snowpark session. The Snowpark session allows us to directly interface with data, compute resources, and other entity types within Snowflake. Now let's go ahead and see what GPU resources we have available in this compute pool. So again, for the GPU NVIDIA medium instance type, we have four NVIDIA A10Gs. Again, we have several different instance types for users to choose from, and we also support multi-node clusters within the compute pools. So let's go ahead and bring in some data now. We are going to be using data on used cars that are listed for sale in the US and we're going to attempt to predict what price those cars will sell for. So the first thing we'd like to do is look at this price column and see some descriptive statistics. And one thing that jumps out right away is that the max car price listed is over $3.7 billion. That's a little too rich for my blood, so let's bring it down to something that might better represent the US used car sales market. Cars that are listed for sale for under $100,000. Now this looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and go through and start selecting some features. So when I see my schema, I have price, which again will serve as our label column. We also have information about the make, model, condition, mileage, and other characteristics of these cars. We won't use all of these features so we can go ahead and drop some of these from our data frame. Next, we'll do some uh, null value filling so we don't have any missing data being fed into our model. We'll then do an operation to understand what are the 1,000 most common model types in our data set, and any of the models outside of that top 1,000 will cast to infrequent. This will help control the dimensionality when we do one hot encoding here shortly. We'll also go ahead and union the data to itself a couple times to go from 400,000 rows to 1.7 million rows, just to make sure we're really testing out these GPUs appropriately. Now we'll go ahead and go through some cells that have been previously run for the sake of time, starting with our Snowflake one-hot encoding. So here we're going to transform our categorical variables into a form that the machine learning model can read. We end up with about 1,700 columns after this operation. We'll do some renaming of these columns just to clean it up, and then we'll feed it into a train test split. Now we're ready to start our model training. So here's some information before we jump in about how to specify an XGBoost model to leverage available GPUs. It's actually controlled by the tree method argument. And this is the same for open source XGBoost as with the Snowpark ML implementation of XGBoost. When tree method is set to hist, it will not attempt to use any GPUs, even if there are some available in the environment. When the tree method is set to GPU hiss, it will leverage any GPUs. It's also worth noting that Snowflake will distribute any model training by using Ray, whether that's on CPUs or GPUs. So let's go ahead and define our models and start training. 
So here we can see we have our CPU model first, which uses the HIST me method, and then our GPU model, which uses the GPU HIST method. So let's go ahead and kick off those trainings. So now we can go ahead and see that our models have been run and trained. We see that the CPU based model takes about five and a half minutes to run. And then if we scroll down to our GPU model, we complete our running in under two minutes. So a little over three X improvement in the training time for these two models. So really great to see how we're able to leverage the GPUs on an already optimized distributed model training job. We'll go ahead and compute predictions for each of these models here, and then we'll compute some performance metrics for this model. So here you can see our R squared is about 0.86, which is pretty solid. We'll then go ahead and visualize our predicted and actuals using the Seaborn library that we brought in earlier. So here we can see there's a reasonable positive correlation between the price and the predicted price, showing that we have a solid model built out here. If this is something you would like to try out, we do have a quick start available for this workflow. You can see some information about the prerequisites, learning objectives, what you'll need and what we'll build out. There's a few SQL steps just to set up all the resources, things like virtual warehouses, databases, schemas, compute pools, etc. You can then access the notebook at this link, bring it into your Snowflake instance, configure everything as shown here, and just run everything like I showed you. In conclusion, we are able to leverage GPU resources on top of Snowflake by using the container runtimes in native Snowflake notebooks. We trained two different models, both of which were distributed using Ray for optimized performance. However, our GPU-based model had an extra boost, which led us to even faster train times. I hope you enjoyed the session today. Please leave a comment below if there's any questions you have, and we really appreciate your time. Thank you.